one of the most powerful gifts we have as human beings is the ability to choose. God created us in his image and he gave us free will and choice. But most times in the world we live, we have so many things that try to influence our choice, things that try to speak to our emotions. But then every choice you get to make, it is a voluntary thing. Since we are given choice as a gift, which is very powerful, the way we use this gift, you determine how it affects our life, whether negatively or positively, directly or indirectly. There are three things I want you to note about your choice in this video. Number one, you are free to choose, but you can't choose the consequence. You are free to make any choice you wish to make, but the consequence of that choice cannot be chosen by you because the consequence of every choice you make is inherent in that choice. God created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden and said, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in the day you eat, you will die. That was an option. They had choice to eat of every good tree, freely. But then only one tree was there as an option for them. Don't eat this. Because the day you do, this is the consequence of this choice. The rest you can eat and live. Good consequence. But then, being deceived by the devil, they had the freedom to choose whatever they wished. And they choose. But the freedom that you have to make a choice does not mean that you can change the consequence of the choice you made. And if you that you were able to change the consequence of their choice, they would have. But then, that is to tell you, you are only free to choose. But the consequence is something you cannot manipulate. Sometimes I know you could have good reasons for making bad choices. It's just like in our lives as Christians, as individuals, sometimes you may have good reasons that you want to make bad choices, like to watch porn, to masturbate, to go into premarital sex. A lot of people have so many reasons that they could do things that seemingly to the standard of and values that God has said in the scriptures are not good. So whatever could be the reason, bad choices cannot bring forth good consequences. So every choice you make, you cannot choose the consequences. If you make a choice of a bad partner, whom you've seen the red flags, you know it's not going to work, and then you still go ahead with it. Whatever consequence you get to see, it is your responsibility. Point number two, choice is a call to responsibility and intentionality. By the time you make a choice, the responsibility is on you to bear the consequence of the result and effect of it. So it is then pertinent that as an individual, before you make a choice, you consider, you think about it, you pause and think so that you will not make a choice that will bring forth bad consequences because you are responsible for your choices. A choice is a call to responsibility, which means it's calling you to take responsibility for every action you want to make. Knowing that you have the freedom to choose is a call for you to take responsibility and be intentional about every action you make because you know that to every action, there is always a reaction. Newton's law says that to every action, there's always an equal and opposite reaction, which is just scientifically. But then in life also, to every action you make, there is a consequence to it. So then it behooves you to know when I make a choice, I am responsible for something. I am taking a responsibility. When I make a choice to go into a relationship, when I make a choice as a leader, when I make a choice as a parent, there is a responsibility that I have which will bring forth consequence. And if I make this choice, whatever consequence will come, I should also be ready to take the responsibility for it without throwing blames. So you cannot make a choice in ignorance or just based off on being pressured to make it. Or maybe you're just making the choice based off on your emotions, your feelings. And most times in relationship, most people make a choice of that. They had wants what it wants. And my submission to that would be, your heart does not have a mind of its own. So even when your heart and your feelings want something or someone, it is your responsibility to give your heart what is good for it. Because your heart somehow is ignorant. It does not know everything. 
It just desires something based upon the fact of what it's exposed to. What you feed your mind, your soul, your heart with, that is what will build up the desire. So if your heart wants someone, a particular person looking the particular way you see, somehow the fantasy has been built in you to desire such people. But because your heart wants it, doesn't mean you should give it to your heart or you should take it. Your choice is a call for you to take responsibility. You can also apply that in many areas of your life. Whatever you desire does not mean you should go ahead and get it. You should then sit to consider, is this good? Is this profitable? Would this bring good before you go into it? The third point is God is in control, but God is not controlling, which means God will not make your choice for you. And God created man not like robots, which needs to be controlled. God made man in his image and gave man a mind of his own so that he would think and decide on his own. And God is so good because he, he can temper with man's mind without man even knowing. But yet, he does not infringe on our right to choose. That's why the Bible says, I place before you life and death. Choose life that you and your children may live. He is not trying to say, you must choose life, whether you like it or not. That's controlling. But it's like, I give you this option to choose, but then I'll show you what is best for you. In our lives every day, God will never make a choice for us. He has given us a mind of our own to decide. The choice for salvation is yours to make. The choice for redemption is yours to make. He has done everything on his path for us to receive it. But then it's our choice to go for it. The salvation that he has provided, the redemption that he has bought with the blood, the forgiveness that he has provided, the gift of righteousness that he has provided, the grace that he has provided. But what are we waiting for is our determination, our choice to choose, to accept as many as received him to then give you the power to become the sons of God. So as a child of God, God will not infringe on your right to force something on you. He will not coerce you to do something that you don't want to do. He will not coerce you to choose something that he wants for you. He needs you to decide. God is not controlling, even though he's in control. So when you make a choice, you know you have a responsibility. You know you can't change the consequence. And you know God won't make a choice for you. So then the only thing you need to do is consent to ask God to help you with wisdom to make the right choices. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. And I would like you to share your thoughts in the comment section. If you have other things you might want me to talk about on this line of choice and choosing and decision, you may ask the question in the comment section and we will talk about that, we we'll deal with that. Thank you for watching this video. I am Uwe Pan. Do well to subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up and share it to people that you may need to hear this. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. God bless.